Hey everyone, and welcome. In the world of software development, there's this silent killer of productivity. It's that dreaded feeling of being blocked, and it can stop a project dead in its tracks. So in this explainer, we're going to break down exactly why it happens and build a super practical playbook to get things moving again. So let's just ask the big question right up front. When a project starts to slip, what do we usually blame? We think, oh, the code must be too complex, or maybe the engineers just aren't typing fast enough, right? But what if the biggest bottleneck has nothing to do with writing code at all? What if it's all the time we spend just waiting? And that really is the heart of it, right there. See, this isn't just about making one developer's day a little less frustrating. When you reduce that blocked time, you are literally pulling a lever that boosts the entire company's output. It's this massive and often totally invisible opportunity for improvement. Okay, so here's our game plan. We're going to start with the fundamental divide that causes most blockers, the what versus the how. Then we'll dive into the two big types of blockers, communication and technical ones, with some real-world stories and solutions. And finally, we'll wrap it all up into a simple toolkit you can start using like today. First things first, we've got to talk about the division of labor. Seriously, the root of so many problems in software development comes from a simple confusion over who's responsible for what. Getting this right is the absolute foundation for everything else we're going to talk about. And this slide just lays it all out perfectly. On one side, you got the product manager. They own the what. They're the ones defining what a feature should actually do for the user and what the business logic is. Then on the other side, you have the software engineer. They own the how. They decide the best way to technically build that feature, how to test it, and how to make sure it's fast and secure. When these lines get blurry or one side doesn't give the other what they need, that's when you get blocked. All right, let's tackle our first major category of blockers. And trust me, it's a big one. This is what happens when an engineer picks up a task, stares at it, and has absolutely no idea what they're supposed to build because the what just isn't clear enough. Does any of this look a little too familiar? An engineer is all ready to code, but the ticket just says, implement new pricing model. Or a bug report lands in your lap that says, checkout is broken. And that's it. No other details. Yep, these are the classic communication blockers that stop work before it can even get started. So for all you product managers out there, here's how you become the hero of this story. First, over-communicate. I'm serious, there's no such thing as too much context. Second, give people concrete examples. The source material had this brilliant story where a super complex cost calculation was made crystal clear with a simple Google Sheet. And third, set up a definition of ready, a simple checklist that a task has to pass before an engineer even lays eyes on it. And this right here, this is the goal. You can think of it like the 80-20 rule for tasks. By the time an engineer starts working, 80% of their questions about what to build should already be answered right there in the ticket. That last 20%, that can be sorted out with a quick chat, not a week-long investigation. But hold on, it's not all on the product manager. This is a two-way street. Engineers, you have a huge role to play here too. It is your responsibility to ask for clarity when you don't have it. Don't just sit there spinning your wheels for a day in silence. You know, sharpening your soft skills, knowing who to ask and how to ask, is honestly just as important as your technical skills if you want to stay unblocked. All right, let's shift gears from the what to the how. So, picture this. You've got a perfectly defined task, the requirements are crystal clear, but then, bam, you hit a technical wall. It's a bug you can't trace, a library that's acting weird, or a concept that's just really tricky. The very first thing you need to know is this is completely 100% normal. It happens to everyone. The source points out that even the most senior engineers, folks with 20 years of experience, are Googling stuff constantly. So the goal isn't to never get stuck, the goal is to get unstuck efficiently. So how do we do that? Well, here are three really powerful strategies. First, when you're staring down a huge, complex problem, just try to make the smallest possible change you can think of, anything to make a little progress. Second, learn to love your debugger. It is literally a superpower for seeing inside your code. And third, always remember that the problem might not even be in your code at all. It could be coming from the outside. Let me tell you a quick story that shows the power of mastering your debugger. So, the team was dealing with this bizarre bug where order totals were just wrong, sometimes. They couldn't figure out why. It was random and causing huge problems during big sales. Now, the crucial thing here is how the engineer tackled this. He didn't just guess, he was methodical. He replicated the issue on his own machine, then used a debugger to walk through the code line by line. 
This let him see the exact moment of variable one haywire, and he pinpointed a very specific formatting issue in a PHP function that only failed on numbers greater than a thousand. I mean, without a debugger, finding that would have been like finding a needle in a haystack. Okay, story number two. And this one is all about looking for those external causes. So imagine this, you haven't shipped any new code for a week. Yesterday, everything was working perfectly, but you come in this morning and the whole system is throwing errors. Your heart sinks, right? What could it possibly be? As you can see from this timeline, the problem wasn't in their code at all. A third-party library they were using to talk to Zendesk had some kind of SSL issue. Now, instead of just waiting around for the library owner to fix it, the team acted fast. They forked the library, patched the issue themselves, and deployed their own temporary fix to get the system back online in a matter of hours, not days. And this quote from a CTO just captures the spirit of engineering so well. You are almost never the first person to run into some weird technical bug, I promise. Places like Stack Overflow are absolute treasure troves of answers from people who have already fought the battle you're fighting right now. And here's one last tip. It sounds so simple, but trust me, it's a game changer. Sometimes the best way to get unblocked is to just step away from the keyboard. Drawing the problem out on a whiteboard or even just a piece of paper can give you a totally new perspective and help you see the solution that was hiding in plain sight the whole time. So we have covered a lot of ground, from communication breakdowns to those deep, tricky technical puzzles. Let's boil all of this down into a simple, actionable toolkit that you and your team can start using right away. For you product managers, your toolkit is all about clarity and prep work. Provide that rich context, use concrete examples to make abstract ideas feel real, and create a solid definition of ready to make sure no task gets started until it's actually primed for success. And for you engineers, your toolkit is about proactive problem solving. First, use that 80-20 rule as a quick gut check to see if a task is ready. When you're technically stuck, focus on making the smallest change possible just to get some momentum back. Become an absolute wizard with your debugger. And finally, never be afraid to ask for clarity and tap into the incredible knowledge of the developer community. And look, if you only remember one thing from all of this, please make it this. Being blocked feels like running into a brick wall but the solution is rarely to just run at it harder. The real key is to think outside the box, find a tiny crack, make a little bit of progress and build your momentum from there. So I'll leave you with this question to chew on. Whether you're a product manager or an engineer, what's the one small change you can make today to reduce that blocked time for your team? Maybe it's adding just one more example to a ticket, or maybe it's finally learning that new shortcut in your debugger. That one small change could be the start of a much more productive and honestly, a much less frustrating future.